Welcome to Harsh Reality Broadcast on the 7th of September 2015. The title of this presentation is called Absolute Explosion of Debt, Unprecedented Times Ahead. Now, the governments have found ingenious ways to over leverage. In other words, to increase the debt. They've done it by zero interest rate policy. They've done it by quantitative easing. They've done it by uh, increasing the debt ceiling, in other words, running deficits year on year, not facing up to reality. Um, we've had, as the public, uh, credit cards. Uh, there's been an increase of student loans. So all this is creating problems for the future. Now, the difficulty is they're not prepared to face the issues now. And because they're not prepared to face the issues now, that is building up a massive problem for the future. But hey, which politician wants things to go wrong on their watch? So they're just kicking the can down the road. So we are fed optimism in the mainstream media, but the reality is totally different. People who follow my channel will be aware that I'm not religious. However, that's not to say I don't have any moral values. I do. Simply put, I treat people as I'd like to be treated. I just wish some religious people would have the same outlook, but I actually find quite a lot of them very judgmental. And I suppose I can understand it to a point. If you're indoctrinated from a very, very early age, it's very, very difficult to get rid of any beliefs. Let's give you an example. Say, for example, you were on an island and you were brought up in a particular belief system. The chances are you're going to believe that belief system. And then somebody on a different island may have another belief system. And it could be different from yours. So what I'm trying to say is they try and make sense of the world from the information they have. And if you've not got a lot of information, you can get it wrong. And that's why if you go around the world today, there's def very different views. There's very different cultures. So me as a critical thinker, I think to myself, well, they've all got a different slant on things. Who's right? Now, don't get me wrong. If people want to be religious, that's absolutely fine with me. But I like to think myself as a critical thinker. Krugman and Layard suffer from optimism bias. Now this was dated the 9th of July 2012, so it's quite an old article. However, I do believe its content is very, very important. I'm just going to read this through now. It feels like one more throw of the dice for central bankers stuck in the last chance saloon. Last week's rate cuts from the European Central Bank and gilt purchases by the Bank of England were certainly better than nothing. Well, I disagree with that part. It wasn't better than nothing. As far as I'm concerned, it was a delaying tactic. However, I'll read on. We shouldn't kid ourselves, however, that they'll provide the answer to life, the universe and everything. Our economic and financial problems are too big to be fixed with a simple flick of the interest rate switch or an extra 50 billion of quantitative easing. Now that part I do agree with. It is too, too big to be fixed. Yet until now, the puppet masters who pull our economy's strings have persuaded themselves they know how to deliver us to the promised land. Central banks have persistently provided forecasts for economic growth, which in hindsight have proved to be far too optimistic. Right, I'll just tell you my slant. They know, these people, that we're going to head for a terrible future economically. They actually know this, but they don't want to tell us this. So this quantitative easing, as far as I'm concerned, is a transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich. But they don't admit it. They couch it in a different way. Here's an optimistic uh, article from the BBC, dated the 24th of August 2015. Decent growth ahead. 
say CBI, as it upgrades UK forecast. Really? Is that really going to happen? Seriously? With all the debt that we have in the UK, we're actually going to get growth? Well, the reality, as far as I'm concerned, is completely different. And I can see how this is going to pan out. They will blame a lack of growth on external events. They will not be honest enough to say that as a country we have far too much debt. It's just not the way the game is played. And it just says here, the UK is to enjoy decent quarterly GDP growth, the CBI has predicted, as it upgrades its forecasts for this year and next. Well, I'm going to remind people that this will not happen. Here's an article from The Telegraph. This is dated Friday the 21st of August 2015 and it says Government posts 1st July surplus in three years as tax receipts swell. Income tax receipts rose to a record high for July as Chancellor says 1st July surplus in three years shows Britain's recovery is well established. Seriously, I could laugh. I really could because the trend if you look at the statistics is deficits but hey we've got one uh, month of um, surplus so obviously uh, this has been read as uh, recovery well all I can say is let's wait and see okay let's take off the rose tinted glasses and see the reality. Here's a picture of um, rose tinted glasses and if you look in the glasses everything does look rosy and that's how the mainstream media want to portray of economic events. However looking outside the frame you can see the reality and let's be honest reality is harsh but we like to be optimistic. We want to think things are going well. We feel better that way. And I'll give you an example. Let's say two people are about to get married. And we ask them the question, what's the chances of getting divorced? They would actually say, oh, it'd be very, very slim. However, the statistics tell a different story. There is a high divorce rate, but when you ask people when they're about to embark on marriage, they will not trust the statistics. They think they're going to be different from everybody else. So we do have an optimism bias built in within, within us. It's interesting to note when the media attention is taken away from a particular country, we tend to forget about its problems. Greece hasn't been mentioned much recently and therefore to a certain extent we think the problem's gone away well the truth is going to be very different from that uh, the problems will come back to haunt Greece they've had a temporary respite by the injection of cash but do people really think it's going to improve their lot we'll see problems occur again in the future but it'll be much worse Here's an article that I actually think reflects reality from The Guardian. Um, I had to do my research to find it. It isn't actually headline news. But it says, global debt has increased by 57 trillion in the seven years following the financial crisis, according to a new report. While China's debt as a share of GDP now stands at higher than that of the US. Wow. That is reality. And people don't understand how much 57 trillion is. It is massive. Countries have been hell bent in spending money well beyond their means. Well, now the chickens are coming home to roost. We are going to have a very, very different future. Unfortunately, people suffer from normalcy bias. And that is to say, the experiences they've had in the past 
they expect to continue into the future? Well, they'll have to adjust their expectations because the future is going to be very, very different. I was managing my assets late one night when my eyes beheld a dreadful sight. The economy began to destabilize and suddenly, to my surprise, the market crash. It was a monster crash. A monster crash. No one could borrow cash. The market crash. It collapsed in a flash. The market crash. It was a monster crash. From the corner office and executive suite to the trading floor and throughout Wall Street. Everybody came from their humble abodes to salvage what they could while the system implodes. The market crash. It was a monster crash. A monster crash. No one could borrow cash. The market crash. It collapsed in a flash. The market crash. It was a monster crash. Wall Street was having fun. The party had just begun. The guests included Greenspan, Bernanke, and Paul Sun. The scene was rocking or were digging the sounds of the bailout bills that were making the rounds. From Congress, relief was about to arrive. Seven hundred billion to keep us alive. We got some cash. We got some monster cash. Some monster cash. It was a Wall Street smash. We got some cash. It arrived in a flash. We got some cash. We got some monster cash. Whoa. Out of a coffin, a voice did ring. Whoa. Someone was troubled by this whole thing. Whoa. Whoa. We opened the lid to see who was there. He said, Whoa. "Whatever happened to laissez-faire?" It's turned to mash. It's turned to monster mash. Out with the trash. There was a strong backlash. It's turned to mash. Wall Street was much too rash. It's turned to mash. It's turned to monster mash. Now everything is cool. It has gone as planned, and the bailout bill is the law of the land. In a few more years, we'll forget, and then unregulated markets will be back again. Then we can mash, and we can lend out cash. The monster mash. Some crimes will be a smash. Then we can mash. We'll get rich in a flash. Then we can mash. We'll lend out lots of cash. Quamu, Merrill Lynch, Quamu, Freddie Mac, Quamu.